Welcome to Hoops High, Chicago's leader in youth-produced sports broadcasting and youth media education. Hoops High is produced by high school students learning the skills of professional broadcasting. Hoops High is the flagship program of Free Spirit Media and is made possible in partnership with After School Matters, the Chicago Public Schools, and Chicago Access Network Television. We hope you enjoy the show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. If you just tuned in to Hoops High, my name is Michael Ingram, and I'll be serving as your play-by-play -play for you. And I'm Quentin Green, serving as your color and commentator. Today we are at George Westinghouse College Prep, located at 3223 West Franklin Boulevard, where we have the St. Joseph Chargers, Chargers and the Fenwick Frayers. <laughs> It should be a very intriguing game. I'm looking for a lot of highlights, just great ball movement and not too many fouls. In the middle jump for ball is number 32, Tom Plenick, and number 35, Nick Rakovesi. Rock. Or C Rocco Seabrook. The crowd is going up already. And another jump. A foul. A foul on jump ball. That's something very rare to see. Taking the ball out will be number 21, Brown. He'll be giving it to number 30, Watson. Foul coming in off the inbound. That's very, very rare. Watson with the ball. Watson goes around, passes it to Ash. Ash on the drive, and that's no good. Clinic with the rebound. Smith in transition. Smith kicks it to number 20. What a great way of number 22. Watson with the ball, you hear let's go fire chance. I like the confidence here. Number 30 gets a wide open right. Seems that he is right handed. I'm not sure that's something that number 20 will want to do, you know. Number 30, Watson is a junior. Six foot. First free throws up and in. He's kind of missed automatic. He misses his second. Rebounds batted around. And number 14, Smith gets it back. Kicks to number 40 to Smith. Smith directs traffic. Smith is looking. Smith passes to the other Smith, to Lindsey. Lindsay to Plenick. Plenick back to Lindsay. Lindsay to Smith. Smith to Smith. Smith goes around and pick. Tries to get up, gives number 40 a pass. He stops. Gives it back to Smith. Smith directing traffic with a center on. The other Smith gives it. He goes around, throws it down low to number 40 with a great turnaround. And he misses. Number 21 with the ball. Brown. Kicks to Washington. Back to Brown. To Ash for three with a great jumper. That's no good. Smith in transition. Smith kicks it to Lindsey. Lindsey for three. That's good. That's his favorite. That's all he does. He shoots a lot of threes. He makes it look really, really easy also. Number 21 with a pull up. That's no good. Rebound by Lindsey. Lindsey in transition. He tries to throw it over to Plenick. Plenick gets it off a tip. Plenick pulls out, passes to number 44. Mid -range. That's good. Dan Dwyer. And the timeout is quickly taken. Phil, we're taking a quick lead of 7 to 1. I know about personal experience by watching Fenwick. When they get up, they really don't lose too many leads unless they're playing a really great team. 
You can see right here a fan shot. Crowds enjoying, few on their phones. Tell their friends to get here. Come watch this great game. You see a lot of Fenwick players. I mean, Fenwick supporters, not players. I apologize. Number 30, Watson with the ball. Number 15 with the pass to number 30. Number 30 with a great crossover. Pull up, and that's no good. A tip, that's no good. Smith in transition. Passes it to the other Smith. Back to Smith. Smith to Smith. Smith to Lindsey. Lindsey goes around the pick from Plenty. Plenty on the drive. He stops. Gives it back to Lindsey. Lindsey on the drive. To Smith for three. That's no good. Number 35 with the rebound. Number 30 in transition. Tries to pass. Somehow he gets it. That's the defender, but. I guess his partner thought it was going to be a steal. What, what do you think about the fan support, Q? I mean, it's really a strength for fan, but it actually feels like you're at an NBA game. They're just so energetic, and I believe that's one of the reasons why they have the lead right now. How important do you think fan support is to the players? I mean, as you can see, it's 7 on 1 right now going Fenway's way. And I believe that their fan support is really throwing off um, St. Joseph's gameplay because, as you see, the fans are on their side of the court. And it's just, you know, when they put up a shot, the crowd screams, and then they end up missing. So it's like, it's just a really important role for Fulwick. Number 21, Smith, crossover on the drive, kicks to Lindsay for three again. Oh, that could have been offensive interference. They were, that looked like it was going to roll down. St. Joe's will get the ball. Number 30 with it. It seems that Fenwick's supporters are doing more cheering than Chile than cheerleaders are. Number 35 with it. And now we're going to toss to our sign-out reporter, Jeanette Tay, for a game update. Hi, guys. Jeanette Tay here for your first quarter update. So far, the score is 1-7. to seven. Fenwick is in the lead. Both teams here have their share of support, especially Fenwick. They definitely came out here to play. As you can hear from all the cheer, the game is very competitive. I think this is going to be a good game. We're here at sectionals day two, so stay tuned for more Hoops High if you want to see more. Back with more hoops high. Ladies and gentlemen, you're just tuning in to this great, exciting basketball game. My name is Michael Ingram, serving as your play by play. And I'm Quincy Green, serving as a color commentator. We are at George Westinghouse College Park, located at 3223 West Franklin Boulevard, where we have the St. Joseph Chargers versus the Fremwood Flyers. The score is now 9 3, going from this way with 305 left in the first quarter. This is a very great game. I mean, the, the crowd is so loud that me and you are sitting right next to each other and we can barely hear each other. Number 21 with the ball. Then he travels. Number 32 travels, I apologize. Lindsey subs out as number 42. Ben Pearson subs in 6'4 senior. Looks pretty, looks taller than that. Number 21 with the ball. Number 30 with it now. Number 30 stops, pull up. Good. It's pull up. Look, 
looks like look, looks off and looks like he's gonna pull. Not too much, bro. Number ten with the ball. Number ten going around the screen gets it to Smith. Smith gets it. Smith is dancing a lot. Gets it back. Hoop size produced by high school students who are learning the skills of professional broadcast. All of the camera work, announcing, directing, and engineering is done by the students. Number 35 with the ball. This is here down here. He gets frustrated and gets a frustration foul. Seems that the crowd is really getting to him. Number 21 with the ball. The pass is to number 40. Number 40 gets to number 10. To number 42 down low. Post move. Oh, he gets it back down. And number 10 is there for the cleanup. Jamal Nixon, 6'3 freshman. Number 21 with the ball. He goes around the pick from number 35. Finds a wide open number 30 for three. That's not good. Number 35 gets the rebound, gets contact, and he'll go to nine for two. Number 35. Rocco Civic. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Is 6'9 and a sophomore. And he's pretty light on his feet. That's something you are very, that you are very, rare, very rarely see between. For, um, High school big man. Number 21 with the ball. He bring it up. Hesitation. Kicks to Nixon. Nixon down low to Planet. Planet gives a hand fake to number 42. For a great day by his child. Peterson. Where's that guy? It's Peterson. Number 23 with it. He gives it back to number 30. 23 seconds remaining in this quarter. Great play. You have to make the layups, so though. You have to make. I'm 21 with the ball. He pulls it, goes to the basket. Tries to get the guy no good. Number 42 is there. And a jump ball is called. 4.6 seconds left. Oh, a foul is called. I thought it was a jump ball. You think he can knock down these two free throws? Definitely. From the a bunch of shooters. Their, their shooting range and their efficiency is just amazing. Number 42 getting ready to shoot the second free throw. That one is up. And then. Number 21, pull up. Oh. Dancing out. Free Spirit Media strives to give youth a voice so that we can inform and inspire others. Thank you for supporting our, our work. How do you think that first quarter played out? Well, Fulman is excellent with their shooting. They're, um, excuse me. They're getting turnovers and capitalizing on their free throws. Just overall playing a good game. St. Joseph, they just need to take their time and get to the line more. Or get open. They're really just 
not really passing the ball and just doing pull-up shots. I think they need to expand their game play and get something else going for them. And we are back. Lindsay checks back into the game. <laughs> Lindsay with the ball now. Puts it on the floor. Throw, dumps it over to the point guard. Dumps it over to the shooter. Number 14 on the drive. He's going to do a hop step and lay up. But that don't really work out too much. Lindsey with the ball. Looking to inbound it. He inbounds it to Smith. Smith to Smith. Smith to Lindsey. Lindsey with the ball. He goes to the top. Kicks to Smith. He almost loses it to Plenty. Plenty gets away with a little shuffle. I see for St. Joe's, they have on a roster two number 40s. Both the 6'6, six, six, only difference is one's a freshman and one's a senior. And a name, of course. We have a John Johnson and a Michael Downer. Let's see what's going to happen. Watson with the ball. Watson brings it up. Gets to Ash. Ash to Brown. Brown directs traffic. Brown has a somewhat of a mismatch. Not really too much. Size-wise. Watson with the behind the back. Watson on the drive. Down low to number 40. Michael oh, Brown. My excellent pass. Yes. You think he should have ducked it? He had it wide open. Get the crowd something that they always want. Oh, don't. Number 40 is wide open for a mid range. That's basically his game. Looks, puts his head down. And Steve Wonder could saw that truck. Number 30, Watson with the ball. He's walking it up. Pass it to Brown. Ash down low, number 40. That was a long step, too. A travel for a travel. <laughs> number 21 with it. Smith. Gives to Dwyer. To Lindsey, Lindsey to Smith. Smith to Smith. Smith goes around the pick to Plenty. Down low to Dwyer. Dwyer just needs to shoot the ball. Hoops High is a flagship program of Free Spirit Media and is run in partnership with After School Matters, the Chicago Public Schools, and Can TV. This is a team effort all around, and we are grateful for our partners who make this possible. The crowd is going crazy. Wow. I don't know what I don't know what that was, whether it was a travel or what. Number 30 getting ready to send the ball. Number 23, Ash, with it. 
this is Lent and the strength and the title option. Number 21 with the ball. Number 14, Smith with the ball. This airborne and this is gonna get the ball move on this one. Crazy. A lot of teams like this that show passion every time they get something. Almost with a steal. It didn't really work out too much. Number 30 with the ball. Pass it to Ash. Ash for three. Ash good. That's a nice little jump he got. Remind me a little of myself back in the day when I used to play a little bit of ball. Smith with the ball. Smith to Lindsey. Lindsey on the drive. Lindsey gets contact. Double pump. Somehow he gets that layup to go in. I like the way these kids are playing. Ash with the ball. Ash with a great pull up. Off the glass, no good. Smith to Whitty in transition. He kind of loses the ball, though. He gets it back. That could have been an alley hook. Pass it to Lansing. Number 32, number 40. Number 41 from St. Joe's had a, had a little drama on the board. And the crowd goes in static. Keep up with game action and the Hoops High Cool with Twitter. Just her Hoops High FSM and follow us. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, what number 41, Michael from um, St. Joe's just did. Just ran completely past all the defenders. In. I mean, that's not going to win them this game. They need to get everybody else involved, make, you know, better ball movement. That's really the key to, I believe, every game. Just good ball movement. If you have good ball movement, that leads to open passes, good shots, and good fouls. So I believe if they can get that together, then they have a chance. But one person is just not going to win the game for them. Let's see what's going to happen. Watson really gets it to Brown. Brown gets it to Ash. Ash back to Brown. Back to Watson. Crowd is chanting born. Great kick. Great call by the refs. On calling that. Not too many refs will call a kick. Violation. But that is going to play through it. Number 30, Watson with the ball. That's really great pass to number 21. Gets airborne contact. Scores the basket, and he'll go to the line for one free throw. What do you think St. Joe's need to do to tie this game or take the lead? From the looks of it, uh, I just think they just need to put up better shot selections. They're not really open with the shots that they take and down low. They're just really kind of putting up shots, but it is getting them to the line. But then again, you have to, um, excuse me, you have to just make the free throws too. As you see, he missed that one free throw. So it's just a lot of factors that play into it. But if they have good ball movement, good defense, good shot selections, then they have a chance of coming back. Number 20, Lindsey with the ball, he kicks it to Smith. To Lindsey for a side three. 
That's no good. And 40 gets a great rebound. He puts it on the floor. He gets it to Watson. Watson pushing it up a little bit. Watson. One on one with Smith. Ash on one on one with Smith. Back to Brown. Brown is holding. Watson with the ball. He kind of jumps himself into a trap. He was pushed out of bounds. The cell comes back to the game number 41. Number 30 hits the ball. Great backboard pass. Number 21 with the ball. Great shift. And he gets the Smith with the ball. Great floor general. He's only a, a sophomore. Pull up by Smith. And that's good. I like the way he played ball as a point guard. Seeing that he's only a sophomore, he has two more years to fully, fully develop his game. Ash with the turnaround, Jay. Smith in transition. Pass it. Plenty. Look like he wanted the pull. This is to Smith. Smith. Direct in traffic with 56 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Number 42 with it. He's holding. Gets it back to Smith. To Peterson. Peterson puts on four. This is to Smith. And a great steal by Ash. Ash in transition. This is a great layup from Paul Hill off the glass. Number 21 Smith with the ball. The Jabs. Brings it back, goes to his power for him. Brings it right back. This is to Smith. Smith with the ball. Six seconds remaining. Three, two, one. Can he beat the buzzer? Oh. That was a great first half. A lot of highlights, just like I like it. Great layups, great ball movement. Great, you know, great everything all around. Five, four, five fouls by Fenwick and four fouls by St. Joe's. Can't really ask for too much with that, you know. What are your thoughts on that first half? It was pretty impressive. Fremwick, they just came out scoring, doing what they know how to do. Good defense, few turnovers. And it's just like, excuse me, it's just that the way Fremwick plays and the way they're their supporters are, it's just, they're really giving them the lead. They're really pushing them to win. And now we're going to toss our sideline reporter, Jeanette Tay, with an interview. Is there anything you'd like to say to them? Okay. And did you guys have any Hi guys, Jeanette Tay here with Cassie. She's one of the Fenwick team leaders this game. So Cassie, how do you think your team is doing so far? Um, I think we're doing really well. They're definitely doing a lot better than last year. So I definitely see a big improvement. So this is day two of sectionals, one more step closer to the finals. Is there any advice you want to give to your boys to keep their head up? Um, I just want to say keep playing really hard and go Friars. So between us, did you guys think of any new cheers for this game? Um, no, we didn't. We've just been using the same ones all year, and they've been working, so hopefully it keeps up. Well, I hope you are having fun here, and I wish your boys good luck. We're going to toss it to a PSA. Passion. Drive. Diet. It doesn't matter if you're an athlete or not. Heart. And bounce. 
take every advantage. If you train hard, you'll not only be hard, you'll be hard to beat. You're swagging with Tony Parker. This is Ryan Archidiakono. I'm Prince Ebay. This is Nigel Williams Gosling. Take every advantage. So you're rocking with Amari Stoudemire, and you're watching Hoops High. Watch it or watch nothing. Take every advantage. I am confidence, determination, and heart. I am agility, leadership, drive. I am patience, power, and bounce. I am athlete. I am athlete. I am athlete. I am athlete. Hello, my name is Kevin Durant. You're watching Hoops High. Hi, I'm Tiffany Moore. And I'm Michael Ingram. And, and this, this is your Hoops High, High Halftime Show. Watch it or watch nothing. Hello, my name is Quentin Green, and I'm serving as a color commentator here today. And I'm Michael Ng, I'm serving as your play-by-play. -play. And we are located at George Westinghouse College Prep, located on, excuse me, 3223 West Franklin Boulevard, where we have the Grimwick Frayers versus the St. Joseph Chargers. We are now starting the third quarter. Fromwick up by nine. Score being 29-20. Number 32, Plenick with the ball. He dumps it down low to Dwyer. Dwyer faces up, gives the shuffle. Gives it up to Smith. Smith gives it up to Smith. Smith to Lindsey. Lindsey goes around to Smith. Smith with it. Smith jabs, goes around the pick, stops. Kicks it to Smith. Smith dumps it under to Planet, and Planet is blocked. St. Joe's coming out showing some intense defense so far. Great crossover. Lindsay with a pull up. Hey, great shot. Can't really ask for too much. But great defense, a better offense. Watson with it, kicks it to Brown. Brown to watch. Oh, Brown doesn't give it up. Brown gives it to Ash. Ash to. Watson, Watson on the drive. He throws that in off the glass. Smith with the ball. Smith head fake. Smith to Dwyer. Dwyer with a shuffle. Pulls up, no good. Great layup attempt. He'll go to the line for two free throws. Let's see if he can make it and trim his team deficit down to eight. He misses the first one. Brown with it. And that free throw is good. Smith with the ball. Smith gives it to Ballard. Ballard gives it to Plenick. Plenick gives it back to Smith. Smith with it. Dumps it down on the Plenick. Plenick takes a power dribble. And he gets contact and he'll go to the line for two. I like this crowd. Number 
Does it see shoots that free throw? And that's all. Oh. If you're wondering why St. Joe's and Fenwick, why are they playing at West House? West House is hosting regionals. As number 32, Plenty Kids, still free throw. Number 32, number 30 with the ball. Hesitation. Number 30 with a pull up. A foul. I didn't see. I didn't see any foul at all. A great I defense. The I saw the contact. Number 23 getting ready to shoot two. First free throw is up. And in. Second free throw is up. And in. Number 40 with the ball. Like he's scared to put it on the floor. He should never be scared. Smith with a great crossover. Splits the D. He's so small, elusive. Great dribbling. Smith with the ball. Goes around the pick. Picks it up. Gives it to Ballard. Ballard puts it on the floor. Gives it to Dwyer. Dwyer gives it to Smith. Smith with it. Smith goes around the pick. Gets the left hand layup. And he's fouled. A late foul. Get ready to shoot second, shoot two. That beat is up and then. I mean, I'm sorry. That shot is up and then. You ready to shoot a second one? Number 30 with the ball. He's dribbling, bringing it up. Number 21 with it. Number 30 with a wow, with a wild shot. Smith out in transition. Smith pulls it out. Ballot for three. And he misses. He's been wide open since forever. They should have been passing to him. And two people flopped at the same time. That's a great shot. Two people whomp. Two people flopped, actually. Away. Number 33 to inbound the ball. Let's see what can he do. St. Joe's trying to make some type of comeback. Ballard throws it in. Smith gets it. That's it rolling to the back of Smith to Smith. Number 21 with it. Goes around. Wow, floater. Dwyer with it, and he gets fouled. Three fouls for Fenwick and three fouls for St. Joe's. St. Joe's making a comeback after being down, I think, like 10, but now only down by seven. Eight now. Number 40, his free throw is up and off. 
Watson with the ball. Watson goes around, gets to Ash. Ash on the drive, avoids contact, but just can make the floater. Smith with it. Oh, great leg up. He's kind of like skip to my Lou out there, just skip and speed up, skip and speed up, and just go to the basket. And now we're going to toss our sign out reporter, Jeanette, for a game update. Number 14, free throw is up and in. Let's get ready to shoot a second. Number 21 is getting, I mean, getting ready to inbounds it to number 30. Number 23 with the ball, it passes number 21. Number 21 gets to 30. 30 gets to number 23. Great down low pass between the defenders and he loses it. Smith out of transition. Smith pushing it up. Smith goes left. Smith passes to Smith. Smith back to Smith. Back to Smith again. I think it's gonna be the Smith to Smith. Hey, I called it right out. Smith goes left. He gets away with, oh. He almost got away with a travel. Yeah, travel. It didn't really go anywhere. Number 23 with the ball. Kicks to number 23, Ash. Number 30 with it. Pull up. Floater. No good. Makes it with the rebound. And he's called for it out of bounds. Ash gets the ball in the backcourt. Ash dribbles. Kicks to number 21 Brown down low to number 40, and that's stolen by Clinic. Number 21 Smith in transition. Smith stops, directs traffic. Passes it to Nixon. Nixon to Dwyer. Dwyer to Clinic. Clinic shows. Gets that layup to go in and off the glass. Number 23 with the pull up, and that's no good. Well, shout out the screen, that's no good. Number 21 with the ball. Goes around the screen, stops, kicks it back out to Dwyer. That's good. Don't forget to stay tuned for the Free Spirit Media News at the end of this broadcast. It comes at a 9.50 every Saturday. Random brothers going down to Chicago to find out the latest of the most important issues with teams. This is a great game. Fenwick fans coming out just supporting. And now, again, we're going to talk to our sideline reporter, Jeanette Tate, for a game update. Hi, guys. Jeanette Tate here for your after the half update. So far, the score is 28 to 44. Fenwick is still in the lead. This game is very exciting. You know, the crowd is going crazy. It's a lot of intensity in here. But just for you guys, a couple of key players to look out for from Finn Wigby, number 23 so far. He has five points and one steal. And along with number 24, Brown, he has four points. And along with Glenn Watson as well, number 30, he has five points as well. Keep an eye out for those players because they're making the game happen. But you know, if you want to keep watching who's high and keep up with the game, you have to keep watching.
And we are and we are back with more hoops high, ladies and gentlemen. If you just tuned in to this great game, we have the St. Joseph's Chargers taking on the Fenwick Friars. Fenwick leading 44 to 28. With the crowd very, very into it. The crowd plays a key part in this game. They're kind of like the sixth man on the court right now. No, no, no. Watson with the ball. Watson gets it to Ash. Ash gets it to Brown. Brown back to Watson. Watson with the pull, the three. That's no good. Nixon gets it. Great steal by Watson. And he'll go to the line for two. Let's see if he can knock down these two free throws. First one's up, and it's good. You can hear the crowd right now. Yeah, ah, 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 ah. First free, second free throw is up, and that's sin. Dwyer puts it on the floor, kicks to Smith. Smith on the drive, gets contact, L1! Great play. I love guard play like that. Can't really ask for too much. Much more from, much more from a point guard at that. If we throw us up and in. Number 30 with the ball. 30 goes around us. Oh, great hop step. He takes the entire team. And what's going on? No one seems to be knowing what's going on. Great pass fake by Nixon. Smith puts it on the floor, number 14. Down low to number 40, Dwyer. And Dwyer will go to the line for two. Number 40 with the ball. First one is up, and it's good. He's getting ready to shoot the second one. The second one is up, and good. He currently has 11 points from Rafael's top score. Referee is tripping right about now. And the person at the clock is tripping right about now. He's, oh, since they took out a lot of seconds on this clock. Okay, 52 seconds left on the clock. Number 21 with the ball. Gets to Watson. Watson with it. Number 21 with the ball. Gets it to Watson. Watson gives it back to Brown. Brown gives it. Oh, kick ball. Great rotation defense by these players right now. Number 23 with a East foul. I feel he was dribbling the ball too high from the start. I don't know why the rough called that call. 
number 30 with a great layup. Nixon looking to inbound the ball. He throws yeah, a Hail Mary pass. That's a pass that's definitely to get you so. Number 21 with a great pull up. Pull up looking pretty good. Nixon inbounds it to number 14 Smith and he can't beat the buzzer. Please check out the Free Spirit Media website at www.freespiritmedia.org. To learn what Free Spirit Media is all about, but check us out on YouTube. Search Free Spirit Media to view our YouTube channel. How do you think this fourth quarter is going to play out? Um, I believe for Fenwick, it's going to be a lot of shooting. That's where a lot of their press are coming from, shooting and free throws. And a lot of good defense from Fenwick. You see how the transition defense was pretty good. The double teams were on point. It was just an overall good game. Um, for St. Joseph's, I believe they're going to be taking it to the hole a lot. They've really been driving, getting to the line, really capitalizing on the inside game, which I believe is a key concept of their, um, excuse me, of them coming back. So they can focus in on that and on defense a little bit more. They have a chance to come back. And don't let the Fenwick crowd get to them. That's what I believe is throwing them off too. The Fenwick crowd is very energetic. You know, every possession, every steal, every point, every change of possession, they've just been, it's all out. So I can see how that could be distracting. So if they just focus in on what they have to do, on what they know how to do, then they could probably come back. Number 21, inbound the ball, inbounds it to Watson. Watson with it. Washington's being stuck by number 21, Mike Smith. Washington with the ball. I'm sorry, Ash with the ball. Ash gives it to Brown. Brown gives it to Washington. Washington on the drive. Pull up. His contact. No good. His partner is down for the tip in number 40. Number 40, John Johnson. That's his first time scoring tonight. And he's, he gets a foul. That's a bad, that's a bad block attempt. Number 40, Dwyer will go to the line. He's really their go-to guy right now. That free throw is up and in. He has 14 points. Brown with it. Ash with it. Ash on the drive. That's no good. Gets his own rebound. Passes out to Watson for three. And that's good. This is great shooting by both teams. Been able to knock down the open shot. He has 15 points too. Dwyer kicks to Lindsey. Lindsey. I'm a, his nickname is slow motion because everything he does is slow motion, but he still gets the bucks. Watson gets it down low, number 35. And a foul is going down. I think Fenwick will be shooting one and one. Meaning if, you, if they hit the first free throw, they get a chance to shoot the second one. If they miss the first free throw, then they don't get a chance to shoot the second one. And I think it's kind of neat how both teams' top player has the same points. And St. Joseph's Glenn Watson, number 30, has 15. Same as Frumwick's players, Dan Dyer, number 40. His first free throw is up. Make that 16. He's getting ready to shoot his second free throw. 
That one is up and in. Number 30, Watson receives the ball off a roll. Watson with it. Watson gives it to Ash. Ash gives it to Brown. Brown gives it to Watson. Watson with a put up. Number 35 gets rebound, he misses. Brown with the tip, that's no good. Ball's being tipped around. Number 40, Johnson comes down with it. Brown with a three, rolls in and out. 35 with a put back and he gets the bucket to go. It seems like they were playing more volleyball than basketball, but somehow they got the rebound. I'm 35 with it. That free throw is no good. Smith, number 21 with it. Pass it to Dwight, number 40. Number 20, Scott, with a great pass to Penny. Number 23 with the ball, Ash. Ash goes. If you just can't seem to get enough for hoops on, friend us on Facebook. Get to know the crew and what goes on into every hoops on production. The crowd is yelling because the ref didn't call an obvious foul. You heard that one. Where's the foul? Number 23 with the, the layup attempt that was blocked by Dwyer. And the crowd goes up. I love games like this. The crowd is very, very into it. Dwyer to attempt two or one and one if he's able to make the first one. That free throw is up. And in. Number 40 stalling some time here. Yeah. Number 15, Towers checks into the game for St. Joe's, a freshman. Let's see would it be able to hit this first free throw. That one is up and in. Watson with the ball. He's walking it up. Ash with the great shot. That's no good. Number 35 with it. Puts his head down. And that doesn't go. See what he can do at the free throw line. Let's see what he's really capable of. His team down 43 to 60. First free throw is up and in. Bucket. He's going to shoot a second. And that's all. Ball is thrown over. That's a bad pass. Boy, everyone's saying it's tip. Number 30 with the ball. Watson throws it back towards number 15. 15 gets to number 30. 30 with a great crossover. Watson with it. Watson kicks to Ash. Ash gets contact. And he'll go to the line for two. I mean, three. I apologize. 
He gets, he gets great elevation on him. On the shot. He'll shoot. Three shots. See what it, is he capable of making in three. That shot is up and off. He has to make the free throws. First free throw, second free throw is up. And then, and then 30 second timeout is called. With four minutes and 56 seconds remaining. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, the championship game will be held here Friday at 7 o'clock. The winner of this game will be playing against four. The three-point shooting contest will be held at 5.30 also on Friday here at Western House High School. What do you think St. Joe's need to do to even put some effort back into this game? St. Joseph's really needs to make better shot selections. What they're doing right now is trying to get to the line. But as you can see on some possessions, it doesn't work out that way. So I think they should have at least a backup plan or a different way to go about it. For 456, they really need to stay defense. Stop letting them get to the hole. Um, just really better shot selections and great defense. They can't, they can't start lacking right now. The game is too, too close. Dwyer puts it on the floor, gives it to Lindsey. Lindsey puts it up behind the back between legs and a time out of score. The time out is taken. What do you think St. Joseph should do to get back into this game? What do you think St. Joe's coach is telling them? Oh, I feel St. Joe's should knock down the threes um, and make a couple of layups, play some great defense, hands off defense, and, you know, just basically go hard until 0, zero, zero hit the clock, you know? What do you think was going on in St. Joe's huddle? Um, like I said before, just good defense. Don't let them get to the hold of the line. You see that the offense is coming from down low. Just cut off the cut off their passing lanes, getting away the ball, and capitalize on the other end. Number 14 with the ball. Number 40. Number 40 gets it to Lindsay. Lindsay is called for a traveling violation. Watson with the ball. And number 35 sets a hard pick, and Watson misses the great layup. It would have been a great layup attempt. Lindsey with the ball, he inbounds it to number 14, Smith. Smith is fouled, according to the referees. Let's see, can he earn these charity stripes? Fourteen with it. Shooting his first free throw. That's good. He's getting ready to shoot his second one. Their free throw. 
Watson with the ball, kicks to Ash. Ash with a great three, doesn't fall. Number 14, Smith gets the ball. No look pass to Ballard. Ballard looked like he won the ball. Number 14, Smith with it. Double team. How do you feel St. Joe's is, I'm, I'm sorry, not St. Joe's, fell with this play? They're not turning over the ball, which is the main thing right now. They're just trying to keep the lead, running out the clock. They're just taking their time. St. Joseph is getting up too many fouls, getting up to the line too much. Number 21, Mike Smith is at the line for two. He knocks that one down. He's getting ready to shoot his second free throw. That one is hot for him. Number 30 with it. To the bucket, gets contact, and he just cannot seem to make a layup right about now. Number 30, Glenn Watson will go to the line for two. His first free throw is up and in. Get ready to shoot the second one. In. Off. Lindsey with the ball. Lindsey kicks to Keyshawn Smith. Number 40 with Smith, number 14 with it. He's quickly doubled. Passes it to Oliver Smith. Smith down low to Ballard to Lindsey. Lindsey is fine. Fredericks has excellent ball movement. They're not turning over the ball. They're just running out the clock right now. That's very essential to that win. Number 20. Lands it to the line for two. See if he can knock him down. First free throw. Good. He's getting ready to shoot the second one. That is good. I'm 30 with the ball. I'm 23 for three. That's no good. Watson with the rebound and he's fouled. I think number 23 should start taking threes and try to look for another option because he's been missing his last few. They're already down. I think they should either try to get more contact or look for another man instead of trying to do it himself. Number 30 can race shoot two. First free throw is up and in. Your issue second one, that is up and in also. <laughs> Number 21. A foul is called? I didn't see a foul. I, I didn't see a foul. I did not see a foul.
Want to see more Hoopside? Now you can see full games on our brand new website. Go to www.hoopside.org to see games from the past or stream live from home on your mobile device. Smith misses his first free throw. See if he can knock this one down. No, Watson with the ball. Watson shoots a three. Oh! Somehow he knocks that one down. It's like one of the most complicated threes I've ever seen anyone shoot. Number 25. Elo. 5A freshman. 5A freshman. Fourteen, he issues two free throws. That one is up in here. He's going to issue the second one, and that's in two. Number 30 puts it on the floor. Besides the pass, it's time 25, and he misses. And another foul is called. These are too many fouls. Way too many fouls. His first free throw is up. And then getting ready to shoot his second free throw. That one is up and in. Watson with the ball. Number 21 with another pull up. It's not working right now. And another foul. No, I believe that was an out of bounds call. Yeah, it was oh, out, out of bounds. bounds. Out of bounds. I thought it was a foul. Watson with it. Pull up from far. That's no good. Rebound by St. Joe's. 23 ass for three. That's no good. Number 15 gets the rebound. Right place at the right time for the easiest two points in his life. Lindsey inbounds the ball to Smith. Lindsey gets it back. Throws it over. Number 32, Clinic pulls out. Smith splits the D. And why is St. Joe's constantly fouling? That's prolonging the game. And, and it's giving their opponents more time to put more points on the board. Or they just yes. really want to hold the ball also. There's no getting back into this game. That was 140 is 71 to 54. I think they should just let the clock run out. Yeah, I agree. Missed that first free throw. That's that an ovation for Fenwick's team. Well deserved. Pours a long one. Number three with the ball. Great. 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 Great
makes his move. Gets away with a little push off. Number 24 with the ball. Kicks to number two to number three. Number three gets contact. And a five second violation is called. I mean, this is a good way to let your bench get some play in. You know, the kids who don't really play or who will never play, get some time today. Number 12 with the ball. Picks number 10. Number 10 for three. That's no good. Number 31 with a rebound. He puts it on the floor. Picks number three. Number three. Gets the ball. Number 24 to inbound the ball. Throws it back court to number three. As you can see, the score 73 to 54. Number three with the ball. Number 24. Number 24, Walsh. Takes it down number two. He throws it over. Number 10 with it. Number 10 for three. That's no good. Number two with the great rebound. And I think it's safe to say. Fenwick takes this win home by 19. Fenwick crowd is going up. And this is a great, this is a great game by Fenwick. This is definitely some, uh, definitely a team that you should watch out for in the future. What are your thoughts on this game? Fenwick was just an overall wanting team. The crowd was into it, they was into it. Every point, every possession they had, they were just energetic and ready to play. I don't think St. Joseph's really had that in them. And just, as you can see, Fenwood took the win. They capitalized on their free throws. I don't th think they missed two or three free throws out of all the ones they took. Good defense. It was just an overall good play. Very, very acceptable. And now we're going to toss to our silent reporter, Jeanette for a player of the game. Guys, Jeanette Say here with Dan. He's today's game's MVP. He played with Fenwick today. So first, I say congratulations to you. Thank you. So now you guys are one step close to the finals. Finals is coming up on Friday. Your boys are really pumped today by your squad. You know, your people were out here to support you. How to make you all feel? Excuse me? How to make you all feel? How your support is here? Oh, uh, it was great that we had all the fans here. We're hoping we get the same turnout on Friday. Now, the game was really in your favor. You guys had really great rebounds. You hustled for the ball. You know, a couple fouls got caught, so you guys get some extra points. What do you expect on Friday? Friday, we're expecting the same thing. We're going to be playing against another tough team, another big team. We're going to just have to limit our turnovers again. Well, thank you so much for this interview. And again, congratulations. You can catch Hoops High every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Channel 19. You have been watching Hoops High. You can watch Hoops High on CAN TV Channel 19 every Saturday at 8 p.m. Please visit www.hoopshigh.org to learn more. Hoops High and Free Spirit Media would like to thank our sponsors. We are grateful for their support in making our mission of youth media education and opportunity possible. Hoops High is family, communication. Enjoy it. Who's high is? A sounding. Creativity.
commitment. Hoops High is exciting, meaningful. Hoops High is technology, spirit, a community. Hoops High is home, love. Dedication. Inspired. probably never was exposed to it, they probably would have never have done it, but it's something that you see that interests people a lot. I never worked with a camera, you know, it was my first time learning about a camera, you know, zooming in, zooming out. It was a real good experience for me, you know, I think it changed a lot in me too, it changed my how I think, and it changed like something I like to do in life. When I get older, I want to be some type of actor. So being in this classroom really helped me out, really exercised my ability to act. We shooting it and we shooting it off like, what we didn't been through and like people get to see it and they watching it and they liking it. Like young kids in the community can do stuff that's like worth some type of value. Meet Jaden, a 16 year old from Chicago. He likes reading, playing basketball and daydreaming. As one of 75 million youth in America, he is the future of our country. But today, Jaden's future is uncertain. A new economy is evolving as Jaden tries to find his way in a school system where more than 42% of students drop out and even more fall behind. For Jaden and others like him, the future looks grim. But there is hope. Youth media programs connect with kids like Jaden, moving them from discouragement toward opportunity through the power of communication. Jaden learns about journalism, technology, and culture. He spends his time engaged at school, in youth centers, and at libraries. He discovers how to observe the world around him and share his own stories. He becomes one of more than 10,000 teens involved in the Chicago Youth Voices Network, a collection of innovative programs that come together with a bold vision to reach more people like Jaden, to transform education, and to shape the health of our city. Together, the network gives vision to the journalists, artists, engineers, and leaders of our future. One story, poem, film, blog post, one youth at a time. I remember watching anime when I was younger and for me it was just all about the action like I just liked the way they fought and different things like that but now that I'm older I start to see things and notice things and I'm wondering is it more than just cartoons so my question is like what is anime Anime is an art form used for telling stories in an audiovisual medium, but it's a lot more than that. <laughs> it's like the only thing I know about Japanese culture is like the hang chang on your hang You know, like everybody joke about it, about Asian culture. So I never really like dug into it. It's very hard to sort of make a joke about anime if you don't know what you're talking about you come off sounding really ignorant. Mm -hmm. She'd be like, oh, you like cartoons. And it's just like, aw. <laughs> but then when I started watching anime, I don't know. I guess I, get, I have a lot more respect for them and their craft. Some of the inspiration came uh, undoubtedly from American comic books, hence the wide-eyed characters. It's Betty Boop, so it's like the beginning of 
animation as a as a medium for storytelling. It started early on, like with the very beginnings of film, like Astro Boy was black and white. I was really influenced by um, cartoons and Japanese artists and the heavy lines and the printmaking and the very stylistic uh, images they would make and how they influenced European artists. Anime was using a lot of Western techniques, but after years went by, anime started to progress and it started to branch off and use its own cultural identity. And then Western animation started using techniques that Japanese anime came up with or Japanese creators came up with to, for anime and they used it in Western animation. Like you start seeing the, the idiosyncrasies in their behavior as far as just like how they greet each other when they come to houses, like daily life stuff, geographical stuff. I've seen a lot of interesting looking foods, uh, religious practices. It depends on the type of anime that you're looking at. Any one of the Hayao Miyazaki films is a fantastic way to learn about Japanese culture because if you didn't sort of go the extra length into actually trying to look into the culture, you probably wouldn't even get a lot of the jokes. Maybe a more natural part of the storyline in the anime stories that I've seen. One time in animation class, uh, we actually saw a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, uh, the kids having to fight in the boondocks, and it's actually a frame-for-frame -frame, uh, redoing of a fight scene in Naruto. And I just find that really interesting how uh, they take uh, existing footage from anime and make it yeah, have it in a completely new context, and I just found that really interesting to watch. Anime can be looked at as a direct representation of Japanese culture because it has so many small pieces of Japanese culture, tradition, history, and style inside it. The way I've seen just it's presented naturally, like, okay, this is part of our world. Japan, at least what I could tell, going back into antiquity, their history isn't broken. In the 1920s, Japan was working hard to become an industrialized nation, but discrimination towards the Japanese was a big problem, and it led to the deterioration of the companionship between the West and the East. Japan was an isolated island until Commodore Perry opened it to America in 1858. But even after Japan remained mostly closed to many foreign inf influences until the leading up to World War II. In 1924, the U.S. Congress passed the Exclusive Act that prohibited further immigration from Japan. And after World War II, in the 1930s, the U.S. military almost had total control over Japan's government. After Japan's surrender in 1945, the United States instituted sweeping changes in Japan through every aspect of life, such as new constitution, democratics, education, labor reforms, etc. Japan was westernized and they needed a way to form cultural identity, and the Japanese found a way to do that through art. I feel like a lot of anime and manga and pretty much any Japanese art from uh, came after World War II, so it was trying to like reclaim and reshape their identity after what happened to them. Trying to uh, fight for the Japanese culture in a time when, during the American occupation. Japan was westernizing because of the uh, occupation and because of, of the upset of the war. Anime was like a way of escape. I would say it was a chance to keep in remembrance and reclaim their cultural identity. To quote historian Susan Naper, Film and the visual mass media in general can indeed help to write history and create national identity. Culturally, and in, in, in saying that, they, they tend to embrace a lot of their older habits, a lot of their older traditions. In the West, it's always about industry, the Industrial Revolution, and like conquering nature. But in Japan, it's more of like, it's something you literally have to live with. You have to have some degree of respect for what sustains your own life. In the West, for the most part, they're biased, but with Japanese and Japanese tradition and culture, they, they see everything as equal. You don't, you don't look at just one thing, you need both. You can't just weigh one side heavier than the other. They all both have to be equal and they have to balance out.
And that's when Shinto religion comes in. Shinto religion is kind of like the native religion for Japan. I'm not sure how many people are still of the Shinto faith there. It's so ingrained in the culture that it still still pops up a lot. When you think of like Native Americans, they worship um, sort of nature gods. So you have like the fox spirit and the trees all have spirit. And like if you've ever seen any of Miyazaki's work, there's a lot of Shinto woven into the landscape of his his films. The closest one I, I, I can think of at the moment is uh, Princess Mononoke, where uh, it's all about uh, striking a balance between uh, the environment versus uh, personal gain. San, the princess, uh, she just has completely turned herself away from humanity and lives with the animals and wants to be a spirit of nature. And then you have her rival is Lady Iboshi, who symbolizes like industry and factories. And at first glance, it's like she, it would be so easy to like to see her like one-dimensional villain because she's like industry and that's bad. But then she realized like no one is like a clear-cut hero or villain. Customs from feudal Japan are still used now today in Japan, and you can see that in anime whether it's through food or the way they greet each other or the way they talk to each other or even the way that they show affection. They, th they think they're cool or just because off habit, you know, like ninjas and samurais, that's, I mean, that's all older Japanese history. But I mean, when you start like looking at, you know, the way they name their characters, it'll be off of like older Japanese generals or you know, older clans and things like that. So they're always digging back into like their history and then pulling that and you and referencing it. That's why if you look at something like Naruto, it follows in certain respects Japanese history where it looks like it could be in a time almost like this. Right. Some of them still kind of dress like it's a feudal era of Japan. Things that happened a thousand years ago still have relevance, still have a place now. When I watched anime, I understood most things, but there were like, also a lot of things they referred to that I've never heard of and that's when I officially made the connection that anime when I went further was more than just a form of entertainment. Anime means that um, especially now that it's more than just a specific uh, storyline that animation can tell hugely complex and adult stories in any subgenre that you can think of. Anime is more than entertainment. I would say it's, it's like a window into another culture. And when you watch anime, you start to see the subtleties and Japanese identity in anime, and it starts to reflect real life. Everything that I know, but it sounds like I read a book. I haven't read books on Japanese culture, really. Yeah. No, I've read, I've read articles, I've read pieces, and the reason I read those pieces is because there's a cartoon or a movie that made me go, I wonder what this is about. You definitely can learn a lot of stuff from anime, just as, as far as taking it into the context that it is. It's, it's, it's a very Japanese-centric art, and as long as you understand that, you know, it, it may not necessarily be indicative of like life in general, like like this is exactly how it works or all this stuff happens. You know what I'm saying? Right. Are you learning world history a little bit about Japanese culture? And that's when the lights start going off and I start going, oh, I saw this and this, I saw this and this, I saw this and this, da 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 da. But all of the this I'm talking about are all anime, a manga. So it, it was, so the manga anime would have grouped to, to like my curiosity about Japanese culture. And it explained a lot. But when you start looking at, at the basis of things of you know, either what happened in their history or how they psychologically deal with these things and, and how that manifests in the actual, in the, in the content, then you can start, you start seeing connections between things. So I mean, if you pay attention, you, you, you'll be able to pick up a lot of stuff as far as like their cultural cues and whatever. Anime refers to a lot of Japanese history, and you can see that in anime, whether it's referred to characters, characters' names, their background, where they're from, or their homeland. How I got into it was funny because um, there, there are two stories to it. It's like, how did I get into watching the style of cartoon 
versus how did I get into um, searching for this cartoon. A lot of this I learned from Japanese anime. Right. <laughs> like a lot of this came from me watching it all, then going, okay, these things are constant. Then messing around and reading something in school, then going, oh, I already got told about this. Because I was watching an episode of Dragon Ball Z. Right. Or me going from um, calling ramen noodles, ramen noodles, calling it ramen. Because ramen is what it's called in Japan. It's noodles. Right. Yeah, it's noodles. You know what I'm saying? There's stuff like that that I didn't realize, or even the technique to like a, a good bowl of ramen. I learned that from Naruto. So you know how to cook it? I like you give me, like if I get the ingredients, yeah, I'll, I'll do <laughs> the best version I could do not being from Japan right. or having like Japanese friends around, around me to correct me. Anime projects this idea that while you're watching it, it's exclusively fitted for a certain culture. It's like looking out the window into another culture. Now to keep that. But you're rocking with Amari Stoudemire and you're watching Hoops High. Watch it or watch nothing. Behind the scenes of Hoops High, it's more than interviews and replays. The crew contributes 110% in setup and production. While we have fun, we are also very serious about getting the job done. We have the opportunity to work with big companies such as Nike and to meet current and future NBA stars. We are Hoops High. If you could eat any food, but only that food for the rest of your life, what food would that be? Fish. Fish. Shrimp. I would eat Twinkies for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I would eat every food. Chairs. Chairs? Yeah. Like the one I'm sitting on? Yeah. It is complicated. But anyways, FSM News is on. Warning. The following stories are completely fictitious and should not be taken seriously. Please don't try this at home. Today on FSM News, we're here at the Gary Coleman Youth Center on the south side of Chicago. Coming to you with the reality shows and stars of today. Stick around, you don't want to miss this. Live from the Gary Coleman Youth Center, you're watching the most trusted team news show, FSM News, with your award-winning FSM News team. Polly Williams with the super flashing weather report. Reporters. Aquatajene Carter, Davy Rose, and Lolo Rodriguez, and our number one anchors, Brittany Chance and Stephanie O'Donnell. They gave you a spinning chair? Hello, and welcome to FSM News. I'm Brittany Chance. And I'm Stephanie O'Donnell. There has been a lot of drama around the house of the Bougie Girls Club. Ooh, drama. Let's go check it out. FSM News reporter Aquatajene Carter gets an inside look at the Bougie Girls Club reunion. Today on the Bougie Girls Club reunion, only few can make it, but here are those girls now. Hey girl. 
So, today I expect Monte Nisha to apologize to me for looking at me like that. I will get my apology out of you today. Oh, she's so funny. I ain't apologizing for nothing. <laughs> but I am hoping to have fun. Well, me, you know, I really don't care what the other two think. I'm just here to do me. Last week on the Bougie Girls Club. Uh, I would never eat chips out of a bag. That tea was disgusting. <laughs> Much like your purse. Oh, most hey, Nisha. <laughs> I don't care what you say about me. I'll beat you with my new fursuit chief. My Tanisha, my Tanisha, can I interview you? Sure. So, how did you feel after seeing that clip? Well, I usually don't like it when people see me eat, but I did look cuter than her. <laughs> How do you think it could have been done differently? What do you mean, it can't be done differently? I am better than everyone in there, so it can't be done any better. Thank you. Well, that's all for Bougie Girls Club this week. Tune in next week for part two. See ya. Thanks, Aquita and Janae. We all knew there was so much drama, and now at the reunion, wow. I know, funny but sad. Want to know what's even sadder? The contestants on America's Got Talent. Davy Rhodes, take it away. America's Got Talent is airing the premiere of its ninth season tonight, but after eight seasons, has the show run out of talent? Hey, I'm Sig Lennon. I'm here at the ninth season of America's Got Talent. Here I'm introducing the judges. Ricky Bobby. Shanika Brown. And Simon. Simone. <laughs> this participant thinks that she has the talent to take the show to the next level. Do you think you're what America's Got Talent is looking for? Yes, I do. I am only 11 years old and I know how to twirl a flag, and then throw it, and catch it in mid-air. Now introducing Laban Montana. I'm sorry, that was, I'm sorry, no, I said that was really just whack. You just should go back. Well, I think you just need some more practice, but try again next year. I don't think you should try again ever. You should be disqualified, and that's that. <laughs> Judges and viewers feel as if America's got no talent at all. How do you feel about being given the chance to showcase your talent? I feel very privileged to do this. I didn't know that they would call me and tell me that I could be on America's Got Talent. So when I got this, I wanted to shout out to my mother. I wanted to, you know, just share what I was able to do, which was my rubber band tricks. And I feel like it was, it's going to be a doozle. That was a pretty, uh, pretty all right performance. All right. That was really nice. Oh my God! Like you should really go on to the next stage. No comment. 
do you think the judges were too hard on you? I absolutely do, and I do not like what they have said to me. With you being the last talent on this season premiere, do you think they saved the best for last? Um, yeah, because I'm a multifaceted, multi-talented person. You're here. There's nothing I fear. And I know that my heart. That was whack. That was just whack. Uh, uh, I don't even know what to say. That was... Uh. I believe you do need practice to just stick to one thing and not multiple. You're 18 and a half years old acting like that. Where's my manners? I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Do you feel the judges were too hard on you? Um, I feel like they were because I, I for one think that I'm very talented, but they're entitled to their opinion. I can't be mad at them for being honest. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Coming out this summer, a girl's life will be changed forever. She will come face to face with a mysterious man. But what secrets are being held? And what secrets will come to the light? I know who you are. You're incredibly fast, strong. Your skin is pale white, I'm cold. You know who I am. Say it aloud. No. Say it. No. Say it. <laughs> You're a vampire. No, I'm your guidance counselor. See it all unfold in Breaking Guidance. When someone needs guidance, how will you guide them? <laughs> Interesting movie. Yeah, I just might go check it out. Wanna come? Maybe. So, how about Friday? I'm kind of busy Friday. What about Saturday? I'm kind of busy Saturday, too. Sunday? No. Oh. We should go check out The Real Husbands of Hollywood. Yay, more drama. Hello everyone, I'm Lolo, and welcome to The Real Husbands of Hollywood reunion show. Today, I'm here to get the scoop on what happened in their hood. Stay tuned. with the lovely husbands of Hollywood. I have Nikki Bobby here with me. Man, what's up? <laughs> I have Dwayne Farton here. Oh, excuse me, Mom. <laughs> I have K-Dog. <laughs> yeah. And we have J.B. Ruff on what's the good? end. What's good, d <laughs> <laughs> So, let's get down to business and get the scoop here. K-Dog, who did you have the biggest beef with? Nikki Bot. It was Nikki Bot. Oh, it's cute. Why? 
Because I beat all them in a car, you know, poker game. They ain't talking about some I cheat. I cheated? Why would I cheat? Okay, okay, but wait. Is this true? Did he cheat or did he not cheat? Everybody know he cheated. I mean, the kid can't even cheat, right? We all sat there and we watched him. He had the cards tucked up and we put cheat. him away. We all seen what he did. Okay, okay, calm down, everyone. Let's roll this clip to see what really happened. How you got all the money? Now I want some red. What I have? Nothing. I'll show you what I got right here. So you want to be rich? I bet I'll be rich before you be rich. You Mom. broke. I, I have all my money. I get paid today. Now what? What's up, Ma? I ain't got no job, but I get some my money, Ma. What you doing what? <laughs> doing me. So, you ain't over. You ain't got nothing. You ain't even got nothing. You ain't got your cards right. Today, Ma. Oh. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you cheated. <laughs> See, the thing is, everybody got their attention on farting right now. But the problem is, k Dog, he's the one that's cheating. I'm sick and tired of k Dog cheating every time we have a game. Every time we come over my house, every time we have a party, every time we do something, it's always k Dog. And it didn't used to be like this. k Dog used to be a good guy, but now I'm tired of this mop, mopping up everything we do. He is a mop, and everybody needs to know it. I'm tired of this. I cheated, but I I deserve to cheat. You don't know my name. I'm K-Dog. They all some lambs. I deserve to get that money. All them some mops. Well, we got to the bottom of that. But, JB Ruff, you had a lot of drama this season over a bet. What happened with all of that? See, that mop down there. Who? The mine. Dwayne Farton? Yeah. Okay. So we having a bet on the Miami game. The Miami, the Miami he won. He ain't giving my one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, excuse me, Ma. I told you I was gonna give it to you when I had it. I just don't. That was two weeks ago. I supposed to have right now, Ma. That's before I found out K Dog over there cheating. In what the K Dog got to do with this? He took all our money. And okay. Knew that. Okay. Why you bet your money? You could have gave me for the bet. Okay. 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 Ma. Let's see what really happened that night of the bet. Roll the clip. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Score! Yes! Please, please. Yes, Miami won! Where my money? Man, you know I'm gonna have your money, mop. You better have my money in two weeks. Come on. Yeah, I owe that mop some money. What would I look like giving this man some money, man? I mean, yeah, I lost the bet, so I'm not finna get that mop no money. Come on now. I am Dwayne Farton. No thank you. Yeah, so that mop owe me some money. He ain't getting my money. I'm gonna find out what he's talking about while he ain't getting my money with his broke self. Well, Dwayne, after watching that clip, we saw that you owed him some money. So why didn't you give it to him? Because he broke. I mean, yeah, man, I, I owed that mop some money, but I just didn't want to give it to him. No, you broke. I mean, what Tommy. I look like giving this old Why not? I mean, because he's a mop. Before we wrap this show up, there was a new term introduced to the Real Husbands of Hollywood. Let's take a look. Hello? Yeah, what's up, Ma? You know I won that car game. I want my money. You ain't nothing but a little Ma. Let me find out you ain't got my money. Because the other night, I spent 30 G's on my girl, Ma. What type of mop spent 30 G's on his girl? This mop right here, Ma. Well, there was a lot of mop calling this season. Nikki Bobby, could you tell us what exactly is a mop? Sure. So the best way to describe what a mop is, it's K Dog. K Dog is the biggest mop you could ever find. You gonna take it? K Dog, could you tell us what a mop is? I know he's saying that a mop is you. It's K Dog. But could you give us the real definition on what a mop is? The real definition of a mop? I'm shocked. I mean, Dwayne Farden is a prime example of one. I agree. Oh. Yeah, you probably about the best mop that you could ever see. Since mop is the new term, who was the biggest mop of all time this season? That's a good question. Dwayne, Dwayne Farton. Farton. Yeah, I think it's Dwayne, because you know Dwayne is the reason why we all are in this mess. Well, Where my money? Oh, give me my money for my Give me my money for my Back to you. Oh, yeah. There are surely some mops. But they were awesome. 
And now it's time for the weather. Polly Williams informs you about the massive heat wave coming this week from the FSM News Super Flashing Weather Report. How's it looking, Polly? It's hot out here! Sounds rough. How about tomorrow? Still hot! Okay, are there any changes in the forecast for this week? Wednesday it's going to rain! Okay, thanks, Polly. Hello my YouTube lovelies, this is Amy coming at you with a makeup tutorial. I'm going to start with the basics and then build up to have a complete, finished, flawless makeup look. So let's get started. Now I'm going to follow my foundation. This is a cream to powder foundation, so it starts off as a cream, then turns to a powder when you put it on your face, like this. Yeah, yeah, it's coming along good. So now... I'm going to use my bronzer to contour my face and give it a nice structured look. You can just see my cheekbones coming out right. It looks so nice. So now we're going to move on to my blush to highlight my cheeks and give them a very youthful, rosy look. So now I'm going to start with our lips. I'm gonna start with my lip gloss. So, it's nice. Now that's all moisturized, I'm gonna follow with my lipstick. So, get it nice. Now we're done with that. We're gonna go on to my eyes. Radiant eyeliner. See that nice cat eye that's going on? Gotta have a nice, steady, controlled hand to do that. Now, finish it off. Mascara. The bottom. And there you have it. That is my perfect flawless makeup look. I hope you'll follow this and don't forget to rate and subscribe. Rate and subscribe. And I will see you all next time. Bye. This just in. Did you know that if someone tap dances and make people act strangely? Party for FSM News. She's a Naja Smith. Well, that's all for today at GCYC. So we'll see you next time. Until then, you can find more info about us on Facebook. Just search FSM News. Or you can also find us on ABC7, Chicago's website in the community section. And remember to look for us on Can TV, Channel 19, and now Channel 27 as well. Three, two, one, that's a wrap. It's gonna rain. Man, it didn't fall off. Hold on. <laughs> oh yeah. No, that sounds like a nausea. Right. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> oh yeah. Call me another mop, 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 mop. I said I'm gonna hide your mop. His bro. <laughs> Stop. Action three. Can you turn around at least? You get on my nerve.
know what you are. Wait, I'm the. Oh crap, I must have seen it. You know who? What? I was right. It's fanatics. Free Spirit Media cultivates diverse youth voices to transform media and society.